Hi, in this presentation we will introduce the ideas of Internet of Things and Smart Cities. We will discuss how smart cities can be advantageous for the society and how can they be realized. So, let's begin. What is Internet of Things? Internet of Things is a communication paradigm in which sensors, communication systems and chips are embedded in everyday devices. This enables easy access and interaction with a wide variety of devices such as home appliances, cameras, sensors and vehicles etc. All these devices generate an enormous amount and variety of data that can be uploaded to a central platform and analyzed. The platform integrates valuable data from many devices and it extracts meaningful info using data analytics and uses it to address the needs of various industries. What are smart cities? Smart cities aim at using Internet of Things to exploit advanced communication technologies to support value, added value for administration of the city and their citizens. Moreover, smart cities attempt to infuse technologies into several aspects of the city's infrastructure to make them more efficient and reliable. Internet of Things can have a lot of applications for use in smart cities. They can be used for structural heads of buildings, for example. An IoT may employ vibration and deformation sensors in historical buildings to continuously monitor building stress. These sensors can help build a database of the building's structure integrity measurements. And this database can reduce the need for expensive periodical testing by human operators and allow targeted restoration actions and maintenance for the building. Along with seismic readings, it also makes possible to study the impact of earthquakes on buildings. IoT can also be used for something like waste management. Sensors can be deployed in intelligent waste containers which detect the level of load and hence help design an optimal path for the collected trucks route by processing the data and using an optimization software. And this can reduce the cost of waste collection and improve the quality of recycling. We might also use IoT for something like traffic congestion. Low power widespread communication can provide dense traffic data to monitor the traffic congestion in the city. This monitoring data can be realized by using sensing capabilities and GPS installed on modern vehicles, along with air quality and acoustic sensors along the roads. Citizens can utilize this data to schedule their future trips and traffic personnel can be dispatched in advance for peak congestion timings. There are quite a lot of problems associated with the realization of smart cities and IoT infrastructure. The issues that hinder implementation of smart cities span across political, financial and technical dimensions. Smart cities aim to bridge several aspects of a city's administration together and thus involves a large number of stakeholders. Unfortunately, the bureaucracy is associated with these stakeholders considerably slows down the adoption of smart cities. Under the financial dimension, the lack of a clear business model and shrinking investment in the public infrastructure creates additional constraints on smart cities. Now on the technical side, the roadblocks lie in the interoperability of heterogeneous technologies used in city and urban developments. This results in the need to build a heterogeneous architecture for numerous devices, clear technologies and services. Urban IoT is proposed as a solution for the heterogeneous technologies currently used. The primary characteristic of urban IoT infrastructure is its capability of integrating different technologies with existing communication infrastructures with the interconnection of other devices and realization of novel functionalities. Urban IoT has a centralized architecture and devices are deployed over the area and which generate different types of data. This data is delivered to a control center where data storage and processing is performed. Different components of urban IoT include web service approach, link layer technologies and devices which are deployed. We will discuss all of these, these, all of these three in much more detail over the next few slides. Web services permit to realize the flexible and interoperable system that can be used to extend to IoT nodes through the adoption of the web-based paradigm known as Representational State Transfer or REST. IoT services designed in accordance with REST 
exhibit very strong similarity with traditional web services, thus greatly facilitating the adoption of IoT and allowing reuse of existing web technologies. A reference protocol stack can be constrained or unconstrained. The de facto standards of internet communication such as XML, IPv4 and HTTP have um, A reference protocol stack can be constrained or unconstrained. The de facto standards of internet communication such as XML, IPv4 and HTTP are mirrored in the constrained protocol by low complexity counterparts like EXI, CoAP and LOPAN and can be used for easy access and interoperability of IoT nodes. The protocol stack can be distinguished into three different functional layers, data, application on transport and network. Data is exchanged for web services by the means of semantic representational languages like XML. Unfortunately, the size of XML is often too large for the limited capacity of typical devices of the IoT. Furthermore, the text nature of XML representation makes the passing of CPU limited devices more complex compared to other binary formats. On the other hand, a general purpose schema informed EXI processor can be easily integrated even in very constrained devices, enabling them to interpret EXI formats and hence make it possible to build multi purpose IoT nodes even out of very constrained devices. Application and transport layers Most of the traffic that crosses the internet nowadays is carried at the application layer by HTTP over TCP. However, the verbosity and complexity of native HTTP makes it unsuitable for a straight deployment on constrained IoT devices. The human readable format of HTTP turns out to be a limiting factor for IoT applications because of the amount of redundant data. Also, TCP transport protocol does not scale well on constrained devices, yielding poor performance for small data flows in lossy environment. As an alternative, CoAP protocol helps overcome these difficulties by proposing a binary format transported over UDP and handling only these transmissions to provide a reliable service. Also, CoAP can easily operate with HTTP because it supports the, supports the REST method, it can support a wide range of HTTP scenarios, and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the response codes of the two protocols. As for the network layer, IoT networks are expected to include billions of nodes, each of which shall be individually addressable. However, IANA, the organization that assigns IP addresses, has recently announced the exhaustion of IPv4 addresses. Solution to this problem is offered by the IPv6 protocol, which provides a 128-bit address field. But IPv6 also introduces overheads that are not compatible with scarce capabilities or constrained nodes. This problem can be overcome by adopting 6 LOPAN, an established compression format for IPv6 and UDP headers over low power constraint networks. Also, a border router can transparently convert between IPv6 and 6 LOPAN. However, communication with IPv4 only hosts remains an issue. Now let's talk about link layer technologies employed for urban IoT. Due to its inherently large deployment area, an urban IoT system requires a set of link layer technologies that can easily be used over a wide geographical area and at the same time support a large amount of traffic data. Link layer technologies can also be characterized as unconstrained or constrained. The unconstrained technologies are characterized by high reliability, low latency and high transfer rates and typically include technologies like Ethernet, Wi-Fi and fiber optics. But due to their inherent complexity and energy consumption, these technologies are not suitable for peripheral IoT nodes. On the other hand, constrained technologies have low power consumption and relatively low transfer rates and include technologies like near-field communication and RFID. They exhibit long latencies because of low transmission rate at the physical layer 
and the power saving policies implemented. The third major aspect of urban IoT are the devices that are employed. These devices themselves have three major components. First, the backend servers. These compose of websites and also the data management systems which are in charge of storing a large amount of data produced by IoT peripheral nodes. These websites provide web interfaces for people to interact with. Then there are the ERP components which support a variety of business functions and help in simpler management of the potentially massive amount of data gathered by the Internet of Things. Secondly, we have gateway devices. These are devices whose role is to interconnect the end devices to the main communication infrastructure of the system. The gateway is required to provide protocol translation and functional mapping between the unconstrained protocols and their constrained counterparts. Third, we have IoT peripheral nodes. These are the IoT devices in charge of producing the data to be delivered to the control center. These are usually low-cost devices and may be classified as sensors, actuators or may have some other function. Apart from these, mobile devices such as smartphones, tablets, PCs or laptops may also form an important part of urban IoT. An experimental wireless sensor network tested with more than 300 nodes was designed using these guidelines and deployed at the University of Padova as a proof of concept. The target application consists of a system for collecting environmental data and monitoring the public light, street lighting system by means of wireless nodes equipped with different kinds of sensors placed on street light poles and connected to the internet through a gateway unit. The system shall make it possible to collect interesting environmental parameters such as carbon, dioxide, carbon monoxide levels, air temperature and humidity and so on by providing a simple and accurate mechanism to check the correct operation of the public lighting system by measuring light in intensity at each post. This system is a simple application of the IoT concept but still employs a number of different devices and linked lift technologies and hence represents most of the critical issues that need to be taken care of while designing an urban IoT system. In these diagrams, the readings of temperature, light intensity, humidity and benzene at the University of Padova can be observed over a period of 7 days. It is possible to observe the regular pattern of light measure measurement corresponding to day and night periods and a similar pattern is exhibited by humidity and temperature measurements as well. Benzene measurements also indicate a decrease in benzene level during night time due to lighter light traffic. In the end, urban IoT is a path-breaking step towards the development of smart cities. The performed experiment only mapped a few environmental conditions, but it can be extended to map other environmental variables as well. The initial setup was only of 300 nodes, but it has to be extended for visualizing the smart city concept correctly. This was a simple deployment, but it still involves heterogeneous set of devices and different linked technologies and showcases how they can be integrated together. Thank you.